Okay, uh, today we will talk about uh, nucleation for phase transformations. We understand uh, when we talk about the phase transition, we will always try to understand and also calculate the delta G free energy change because delta G negative is always is the driver force for the phase transitions. Or for the structure change. Delta G negative, to be clear, is a necessary condition. It's not a sufficient condition to make sure the transition is a real story. So now if you check the figure on the right side, you can find uh, the free energy change in terms of the temperature change for two phase, alpha and gamma. And at this temperature we call transition temperature, or we call Te, equilibrium temperature. The free energy of alpha and gamma phase are at the same level, which means both structure, alpha and gamma, are thermally stable. However, if the temperature is below Te, then clearly alpha phase has lower free energy compared to that of gamma phase. In this case, we say the transition from gamma to alpha is possible. Again, I emphasize the free energy change delta H negative is only the necessary condition to provide the possibility for the transition from gamma to alpha. Similar story, if we talk about the temperature above this transition temperature here, you can say gamma phase has a lower free energy compared to alpha, for compared to alpha. That's the reason <coughs> when we write the delta G free energy change, we will use the final state linked energy minus the free energy at the beginning. So in this case, we talk about the transition from gamma to alpha. That's why we need to use the free energy of alpha phase to minus the free energy of the gamma phase. Here we write as GV talking about a unit volume linked free energy, both for alpha phase and gamma phase. And this gives you the contribution based on the chemical part for the free energy. We also understand the delta G equals delta H minus T multiplied delta S, which gives you the contribution from enthalpy and entropy part. Both gives contribution for the free energy. Then again, at this temperature, transition temperature, T equals T both phase, alpha and gamma, have same free energy. That's why the delta G is zero. In this case, we can rewrite this equation, say zero equals delta H minus T delta S. Then we get this equation, say delta H equals T E multiply delta S. Now, if we rewrite this equation, say delta G equals T E multiply delta S. Basically, we replace delta H by T E multiply delta S. Then minus T multiply delta S. Now we can take this T E minus T out. Then we say this as the 
parameter we call undercalling or supercalling, or sometimes we call delta t, which is the real driver force, which is the real parameter we can modify to control the reaction or to enable the reaction or to provide the possibility for the reaction. So here, as I mentioned to you before, we say the delta G is negative, only talking about the possibility for the transition. The reason is for the, any transition, we also need to consider the contribution based on diffusion. Basically, we need to consider about the uh, kinetics, make sure the structure, the atoms have enough time to reorganize the structure where they transfer from gamma phase to alpha phase. That's why the thermodynamics condition, delta G, only gives you the necessary condition. But to make sure the transition is a real story, we have to make sure the diffusivity is also high enough. <coughs> In terms of the nucleation, we have different uh, models to explain the story. And the typical one, we always start from the homogeneous nucleation, which means this nucleation, let's say from gamma to alpha, is the nucleation without any impurities or defects in the system. And all the free energy change link with the volume contribution based on the chemical reaction or volume contribution based on the stray part of energy and also the surface interface contribution okay so if we take about one by one we can understand the story better our aim is to talk about the free energy change from gamma to alpha phase and we select the model as a how say sphere particle say we will have the alpha phase produced in gamma phase and the shape is a sphere we understand when we have a how say um, sphere shape based on same volume sphere shape will give you the minimal surface area, okay? So here we say, when we have a sphere-shaped particle, we will have a minimized surface area. Minimized surface area will give you this part, okay, minimized. Why we need a minimized part here, I will explain to you uh, <coughs> in details. Let's check about first, uh, part of this equation. So 4 over 3 multiply pi r power 3. This is the volume for a sphere. Then multiply the delta g cam, which gives you the direction based on the unit volume. This this gives you the free energy change based on the chemical part based on the unit volume. Then multiply the sphere volume. That's the delta G uh, chemical contribution <coughs> part. And then if we consider about this volume contribution, there's another part. Because if we're talking about the alpha phase, alpha phase transfer to sorry, gamma phase transfer to alpha phase, they link with the strain change in solid state materials. They link with the strain energy. So here, delta G strain means the strain energy change, or the strain, cha strain change linked free energy. Again, it's based on the unit volume. They multiply the volume, give you the contribution based on the strain change. The last part is the 4 pi r power 2. Clearly, this is the equation to calculate the surface area of a sphere. They multiply sigma alpha gamma. Sigma alpha gamma is the surface tension, or we call interface energy, based on the unit area. So now they multiply the area, give you the interface area contribution in terms of the free energy change.
to be clear, in this equation, we say we have the volume change. We have the volume part contribution based on delta G chemistry. This is the real driver force. Okay? And this part, delta G strain, normally is the barrier because uh, uh, we have the structure change. I is the uh, uh, how say, tensile complete strain unit energy. Then this part, the interface area contribution to the free energy again is the barrier. <coughs> then if we draw the free energy change with the particle size here, which means the R, you can say the first curve shall use the interface area contribution. So large particle size, large area give you the positive contribution for free energy. Bottom part show you how about the volume part contribution in terms of delta G cam and also delta G strain. These two parts together give you the negative contribution. Okay, we understand to enable the transition, we need the free energy to be negative, going to the negative side. So in this two curve, roughly speaking, we say interface is barrier volume, including the contribution from delta G cam and delta G strain. They together work as the driver force. But in reality, to be clear, delta G strain part is a barrier as well. So only when you have this part together is negative, then the reaction or the transition is possible. If now, like this equation, we combine the interface part contribution and the volume part contribution together, we will get this overall free energy change with the particle size. Now, there's the how say position link with the highest free energy value we call G star. So clearly, this is the highest energy barrier for the nucleation. And once the part G star link with the size we call R star. Okay, here's R star. So it means, which means when the particle size is larger than the R star then you can say the free energy will going down automatically. Finally, the system, the transition is stable. So how to get this G star? Then G star in mathematics, you can say the delta G change with the uh, particle size. Here is R. So D delta G over DR, the slope is zero. Okay, so in mathematics, the slope is zero here give you the condition for the calculation. Then based on the calculation, you will get what is the G star value and what is the R star value. For the detailed calculation, we will uh, have a practice in our problem-based learning class. But here just emphasize the uh, how say, material physics, talking about uh, the free energy change in this system we have three parts contribution, okay? Volume part, you have this delta G chemi plus delta G strain part. Overall, they must be negative. And then the um, interface part always give you the positive contribution, which means they give you the, uh, sorry, they give you the positive energy and that's give you the barrier, okay? And we are talking about the overall free energy change in terms of particle size. As long as the overall delta G now going to negative direction, then this transition is, uh, is possible. Here we try to emphasize the strain energy is the barrier for the transition again. So this is the figure we discussed before. And we're saying volume for a sphere multiply delta G cam plus delta G strain. And we say where you have the temperature below Te, delta T is the driver force, which will make the delta G can become negative. 
But the attached strain is a barrier. Raising is the check this structure on the right side. Okay, you have a I'll say, let's say a, a solid face structure, including uh, either including uh, interface or without interface. In any case, where you change the structure, it makes the volume large or smaller. They will link with the strain energy change, which means you need to provide the additional energy for this change. That clearly is the barrier. That's why we write this one <coughs> here to say only overall this part is negative, then the transition is possible. If we talk about the individual contribution from the touch strain, the touch strain curve should be on the top side as well. Okay. <clears throat> we talk about the nucleation, then we need to understand now how about the nucleation rate. We can use this equation to explain the physics for the nucleation. So IV talking about the rate, how quick of the nucleation. This value depends on the mu multiply mv multiply e power minus g star over kt. Here, mu talking about the frequency, so how many jumps, vibrations of the atoms. And then the MV talking about the number of the nucleation sites per unit volume. This part talking about the uh, probability the jumps can pass the barriers. Okay, so in this equation, you can notice G star clearly work as the barrier for the transition. So when you have the higher value for the G star which means you have the higher value for the uh, barriers, okay? Then the IV, the reaction rate will be slow. The value will be low. There's a KT here. K is Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature. So this gives you the energy, same energy. So if you have a half thing, uh, Quick uh, scan, you can find the higher temperature looks like give you the higher IV value, which is not consistent with the delta T higher will give you the high IV. So the reality is here, G star is the dominant part in this equation. That's why lower temperature give you higher delta T to make the G star smaller, you get a higher IV and the uh, temperature here uh, higher. This part we are getting bigger, looks like higher temperature makes the IV higher, but in reality, the dominant from the top, not from bottom. Now, we say the free energy is the driver force at the link with delta T. Delta T means the <coughs> Uh, how say uh, T minus T and T is the equilibrium temperature. If we talk about uh, the uh, transition from liquid phase to solid phase, typical one is like casting processing. Okay, and then we can ignore the strain change. <coughs> uh, but if it's for the uh, transitions from solid phase to solid phase, we have to consider the strain part as well. <coughs> Anyway, so here, use this figure try to emphasize when you change the temperature for processing. This is the temperature. We say the value link with the TE. So lower temperature, you will get a decreased G star. And also you will get a smaller value for R star as well. So the physics here we try to explain is the G star value is linked with the driver force delta T, linked with the supercooling value. Lower temperature, the barrier for the transition getting smaller. Then lower the temperature for processing, you also find the uh, <coughs> thermally stabilized particle, minimum particle size, R star, also getting decreased. 
So take this equation here. This is the equation we discussed before. Okay. So the G star, R star, link with the critical value linked barrier and also critical size. Both case, you can say in these two equations, there's no clear parameter linked with the delta t. But in reality, if you remember this equation, delta t cam equals t e minus t multiplied delta s. t e minus t is the delta t, is the driver force. That's the reason if you consider this delta g cam have a function with a, is a function with a delta t, then you will automatically understand the minimal particle size and also linked minimal energy barrier for the nucleation. In both cases, they change with the delta t. Okay, lower temperature, higher delta t give you the higher driver force for the transition from uh, liquid phase to solid phase. Because all the transitions from liquid phase to solid phase is during the temperature decreasing. <coughs> We're talking about the rate of the nucleation and the link with delta t. So we say, look, the IV value, the reaction rate, we are getting higher, we have the higher value for delta t. Based on the theory, the, calcula the calculation says if you try to get the very clear value for the nucleation rate, the delta t in terms of the casting processing of the solidification, the transition from liquid phase to solid phase, at least you need the delta t value is 0.2 multiplied tm. So here you can say we give you the different metal materials in this table and also we have these values for their tm melting temperature so mount bound to multiply tm give you the typical value we required for the <coughs> typical value we required for the uh, for the delta t okay so we say when you have the delta t temperature about 100 degree or even 300 or more, then you get the clear value for the nucleation rate. This is the based on calculation based on the homogeneous nucleation model. But in practice, based on measurement, we can notice the delta t, even they are very small, like 10 times smaller. Then we also get the very clear nucleation we also get the clear reaction rate, which suggests there are some important parameters or important reasons are uh, not covered in homogeneous nucleation model. So to <coughs> tell you the story first, basically we need to consider about the contribution from impurities like interface defects in the system where we consider the nucleation. That's why we will talk about the different model, which is hydrogenous nucleation model. <coughs> Here, uh, talking about the nucleation rate, we say the link with delta t. And uh, again, uh, talking about the solidification for the transition from liquid phase to solid phase, where your decrease temperature you get the higher value for delta t. <coughs> you may notice the higher value for delta t, you get the higher nucleation rate. But when you further decrease the delta t, and this nucleation rate decreased, okay? The reason for this curve is this part, we say the nucleation control. So, Lower the processing temperature, higher value for delta t, you dramatically decrease the G star, the energy barrier for the nucleation. But when you have the temperature very low, then the diffusion of the atoms become difficult because the diffusivity decreases with temperature. 
then the transport of the items become difficult, which becomes a critical step for the transition. That's why very high delta T may link with the very low temperature for the diffusion, which become a barrier for the nucleation. Then the reaction rate, or we call nucleation rate, decreased. If you have a very high cooling rate, very low temperature, you have the possibility to transfer the liquid phase to a glass phase. That's what we call TG. Okay, so now we're talking about uh, the heterogeneous nucleation model. <coughs> Check the figure on the right side. You can say now we have a sphere shape particle, but in reality, this sphere particle was on a substrate. Okay, then now the real part of the material we can get from the liquid phase is the gamma phase. The shape is the sphere cap. The sphere cap link with the sphere and the sphere, the radius is R. Now, we need to consider about the different interface. So, sigma LS means the interface between liquid phase and the solid phase substrate. Here, sigma L gamma is the interface energy between liquid phase and gamma. Gamma phase. Sigma S gamma means the interface energy between the substrate solid phase and gamma phase. To be clear, both gamma phase and also S here are solid. Then now these two vectors will have a balanced force and we can write this balanced force for the force go to left, sigma LS equals force go to right. It's the sigma S gamma plus sigma L gamma multiply cosine theta. So when this force is balanced, the angle theta becomes stable. So now, <coughs> talking about the surface area and the volume for this sphere cap, we can calculate the top surface area for the cap, which is uh, this part. We can also calculate the bottom part of this sphere cap. Follow this equation. Okay. And then the volume for this uh, sphere cap. Vn. Follow this equation. So all of them, either top surface, bottom surface, and the volume link with the theta angle. So now we can rewrite the free energy change for the transition from liquid phase to gamma phase in terms of the heterogeneous nucleation model. This model, we introduce this solid substrate. Okay. So now again, we write the contribution from volume, which is the volume area, volume multiplies the delta G cam. But to, to be clear, now the volume is Vn is a volume for the sphere cap only, not for whole sphere. Then we have this part, which is the top surface of the sphere cap. Then multiply sigma L gamma, which is the, this interface between liquid phase and gamma phase. Then plus the contribution from bottom interface between gamma and the solid substrate. The area multiplies the interface energy part. Sigma S gamma minus sigma S L. Then this equation gives you the overall free energy change during the transition from liquid phase to gamma phase, solid phase. And we consider the contribution or effect from volume from interface, including top interface and bottom interface. To be clear, all the contribution from interface, in reality, they are barriers. Again, if we draw the free energy change of the particle size for the heterogeneous nucleation model, we will get curve like this. Then the <coughs> highest free energy 
value link with the position we call R star, which is the critical size, which is the minimal size we need to make sure the transition is stable from liquid phase to solid phase. And the R star link the G level, we call G star, heterogeneous nucleation. Clearly, this value link with the slope zero in terms of the G change with R. That's why we can write D delta G over dr, then at R equals R star position, the slope is zero in mathematics. Based on this condition, we can do further calculation, we can get what is the R star and what is the G star in terms of the heterogeneous nucleation model. Then if we draw the free energy change with the particle size for homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation model, we can find that they have the same R star value, but they have dramatically different value in terms of energy barrier for the nucleation. So the homogeneous nucleation model gives a very higher G star energy barrier, and the heterogeneous nucleation model gives a very small value. To be clear, here the R star is the same for the homogeneous and the heterogeneous nucleation model. But their linked volume are different because uh, in homogeneous nucleation model R link with the perfect sphere. But for the heterogeneous nucleation model, we only produce a sphere cap. So the volume is much smaller. Also, if you check the G star for the heterogeneous nucleation model, which link with the angle theta. If you change the theta angle value to 180 degree, then you will find either heterogeneous nucleation or homogeneous nucleation model, they both give you the same value in terms of the G star, the energy barrier for the nucleation. That's why we say homogeneous nucleation model in reality is a special case for the heterogeneous nucleation model. Then now, if we talk about the uh, nucleation rate change with the delta T supercooling driver force, so clearly homogeneous nucleation model need a very high delta T to enable the reaction, but for the heterogeneous nucleation model, very small sized delta T is enough to make sure the transition is clear with a clear higher reaction rate. To summarize, for the solidification, the transition from liquid phase to solid phase, we can use either homogeneous nucleation or heterogeneous nucleation model to do the calculation. And we find that the delta T, the supercooling driver force, typically is 100 or even 300 for the homogeneous nucleation model. We are talking about liquid phase liquid phase metal transfer solid phase metal, solid phase materials if the system without any impurities contribution. Heterogeneous nucleation model tell you when we have the defects inside, like uh, model wall or impurities, we do have the contribution from them to dramatically decrease the delta T. That's why normally with the delta T even 0.1 or 10 degree, then we can say the clear transitions from liquid phase to solid phase for many materials in reality. Here I give you one example talking about uh, the materials. The figure on the left is the processing during uh, how say, welding and without any additional particles inside. The one on the right side, we, um, we have an on purpose for the titanium nitride particles inside. Then this work has the seeds to help for the heterogeneous nucleation to get the particle size or green size smaller, also uniform and also atropic properties. For the higher speed steel, also you can use the uh, how say, <coughs> modified processing to add the tungsten carbide particles in the solution to change the microstructure from this well from the left to the right side. The right side, you can clearly, the image shows you the very small sized grains and the very uniform structure as well. 
to be clear, when you add the particles in the uh, liquid phase metal to help you the nucleation, you need to consider about the uh, several parameters, at least for the uh, melting temperature of the particle. If they are not high enough, they may melt. That's why in the high melting temperature for the additional particles. Also, you need to think about their uh, interface energy to make sure the theta angle is small. Because if the theta angle is uh, 180, which means they work like the homogeneous, the particle's contribution is very weak or no contribution. So this is the question we will discuss in our problem-based learning class. Okay, so here I just give you the question you can have a think in advance. That's all for today. Thank you. Bye.